ready for this? As ready as we'll ever be. Yeah. Okay, let's check this out. This is exactly it. So it's very similar to the footage that you saw when we did our boulder testing right out here in the yard. But you'll see the plasma torches. And if you look closely, they're not, they're not looking straight at the rock. They're a little bit angled. And that's done in a way with these air nozzles that you see situated around the circumference of the cutter head. We essentially have this vortex that we're forming. We pump air, additional air in along with the plasma to create this, um, let's, it's essentially like a hailstorm in between. So we're shooting high temperature plasma out, mixing and swirling that in a tornado, spalling the rock. These chunks of rock will come off the rock face and get sucked into these three vacuum ducts that we have here. So this is all totally concurrent plasma excavation and spoils evacuation all at the same time. We have laser sensors to be able to sense the circumference of the tunnel face that we're creating uh, that look to the radius as well as straight on at the rock face as well as a pyrometer. So we're actually taking the temperature of the, the rock surface uh, to monitor exactly what this is at because we don't want to get in too hot or we don't want to get in too cold. So that's something we, uh, we take into account. Uh, there's the, the three torches at an angle. There's also the three vacuum ducts that are at an angle to try to fit through the torches on the inside. And those have heat exchangers. So we're recapturing some of the energy coming back through the exhaust and putting it, keeping it in the front. It's, it's a, a lot of energy and we're storing it in the air as it, it sits there. So we try to keep the metal cool, but the air hot and the rock hot. And it actually works out really well. So this, this surface has been fired. So this is, and it's still relatively flat. So that's yeah. a oh, testament right. to the material. Yeah, I forgot. We, this is the exact metal that we use in Thunderdome. It's the exact yeah. part, yes. It's recycled. Scrappy. <laughs> Reuse and recycle. Oh. You can hear the airbag pulling air, and then that's going to show up well on the mic, I hope. <laughs> Essentially, what this is able to do is this one arm, this airbag can lift with about 8,000 pounds of force. It can pull, push up. There'll be, a, there'll be uh, another one here and another one on the other side, and then there's four sets of those. So what it essentially does is it reaches out and it grabs the wall continuously. So yeah, we have these pneumatic bellows. Uh, and we've got some very keen programming from our very keen smart people. And they're just gonna pump the right pressure of air into these bellows and that actuates this flipper arm. And the whole thing gonna be rolling on these steel wheels. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Morale officer. Oh, he has reaction. feedback. He has, he has design feedback. Air pressure blows up the bellows, puts the pressure on the wheels, and that's going to keep the whole device centered and adapt to any changes in the diameter of the tunnel or inconsistencies in the wall. Uh, and, in theory, going to be able to help us sort of steer the device eventually when we need to start going around corners. Flippers will grab the walls, and we'll just need to essentially more or less gently guide the machine in, push the machine in, into the negative space that we're creating. What are the biggest challenges in your mind? Time frame. Fitting it all in, in the scope? We want to go faster. <laughs> we want to send it. We want to go to the field. We want to get it done. So how much, or are we going to trade off development for, for getting there and getting it done? That's my first, first take on that. Technical challenges? Unknown unknowns, really, at this point in time. We've thought of so many things and we've covered so much ground and we have every system accounted for uh, 
everything is working better than we could imagine, but we just don't know what's going to happen. We actually shove the thing in a hole in the ground. what everyone is thinking and doing and the, the, the little precious moments because that's what's I mean, this what you're putting together is gonna be what we are what we look back on and reminisce but, you know this idea it's almost a decade because I actually came up with it before I formed the company so some number of months before that so nine and years and change maybe close to ten I don't know it, it's wild Anyway, I've been waiting almost a decade for this moment of boring a tunnel through hard rock with plasma. Because my passion is accelerating clean power, right? And the biggest impediment to the growth of solar and wind, which are by far the cheapest forms of new electricity generation, the biggest impediment is lack of transmission lines. It takes 15 years. Going underground, we can do it in 15 months, you know? team is helping. We have uh, folks from IT, uh, Fonus is doing marketing, is now going to be helping us lay out cable. We have people who are normally remote here doing physical work. We're going to have people doing weekends for the next month or two. It's all hands are on deck. The whole, the whole company is behind us and it's going to be difficult, but it feels good. So it's, it's very exciting. Let's get this done. Let's get it done. not very often you get to work on a totally brand new technology that's never ever been uh, commercialized or actually you know uh, built or you know, realized I'll say before thermal spoliation uh, this this is stuff that existed on paper theoretically it was you know capable but no one really actually went and have done a thermal spoliation cutter head design and validation and demonstration in the real world. Among all of the things that I've done, it is the most mad science thing that I've ever gotten to work on. You just look at this like colossal hulking creature that's gonna use machine-made lightning to explode a part of a mountain to go under it. Like, how can you not be into that as an engineer, as like any kind of nerd Science fiction nerd, especially, you're just like, okay, let's use some plasma torches and bore a hole in a mountain. You know, it's it's pretty awesome. I think the biggest concern I have is, does this thing work? We know that TBR works on boulders. Um, we can overbore. We can remove spoils at the same rate as we can cut. Um, but we've never put this together and gone into a solid rock face. We think, uh, based on the geophysics, that it's going to work. Um, but this is first-in-class technology. Nobody's ever done this before. So uh, I'd say the biggest thing is just how all that lab testing, how years of lab testing translates into the field. It's, it's an understatement to say this is going to be a really big day um, or really big week or hopefully not really big month. But uh, <laughs> it will take us more than one day to do this tunnel. I think just knowing that if we can do this, if we can get through hard rock faster, cheaper, more efficiently with no toxic waste, we're going to be able to really transform the grid here in the U.S. and abroad. And that is uh, being able to connect renewables, being able to bring resources on board that were previously stranded, um, being able to lead that electrification of everything, uh, power the AI revolution. Um, we just need so much power uh, and so much clean power. Uh, it, it, to say I'm proud to work here is, is an understatement. I think we're on the verge of something really amazing. We're setting up this entire system, something that the world's never done before. And 
yeah, I just I get to have these amazing coworkers or friends get doing it with me. Uh, I think that's I think that's the most fun part. We get to come home, we cook a nice dinner, and we get to relax together. And then next day morning, we're back at it. We're setting up the system. Uh, so I think that whole it's just it's just a fun just a fun time here. Working shoulder to shoulder all day, eating lunch together every day, going to the same restaurant every night at work, taking turns in the shower. It is a much tighter group than most engineering companies have. You know? So that's been interesting and it's been fun and the relationships have been great, so zero complaints. But the thing we do really well here at Earthgood, in my opinion, and what I find really pleasant is everyone's ability to lean on each other's expertise while making their voices heard. Keep coming back to, I think we have a really good group of people who's really excited and who's kind and humble and can work as a team. Folks who are willing to put in the hours hauling heavy cables and terminating control modules so that we can get this machine done, it has been all hands on deck. You cannot have too much of an ego. The scope of this thing is insanely large. We all have to do our part, be helpful to uh, you know other people, contribute ideas, you know, question or critique, and so that we can all you know we can always improve. Everybody, everybody needs to look at it, you know what they're doing, but also what everyone is doing, so that we have a whole package. Mm -hmm.